Western Pacific is refusing to stop throwing strong storms our way. Typhoon Roque, Philippine name Lewis, is rapidly intensifying at this time. It is now a Category 2 strength typhoon as per our analysis this September 29th, 2022. With further strengthening expected from this system, we could be seeing up to a Category 3 strength storm upon peak intensity, which we'll dive into later on the video on the forecast models, and after that we'll take a look at some satellite imagery. So make sure you are subscribed, leave a like on the video while you're at it, and show your support in the comment section down below. So Typhoon Roque, it is a pretty gnarly threat to the Manami Daito Islands, which it is moving past right now. As we dive into the forecast track map, you can see winds of 100 miles per hour sustained around the centre, a pressure of 978 millibars, 10 minutes sustained winds of 85 miles an hour, or 160 kilometres an hour, located at 16.4 degrees north, 128 degrees east, and moving northeast at 19 miles an hour, that is 17 knots at 5pm Japan standard time. I'm expecting a peak intensity of 115 miles per hour, out of that system. It could be conservative considering how the storm has been going over the past uh, 12 hours or so. However, it's really only got about 12 to 24 hours of optimum conditions left before uh, certain weakening really does kick in. Then after that, the forecast becomes incredibly widespread. And as you'll see a little bit later on now uh, in the JTWC's forecast cone, which is up on the screen now, you can see the JTWC have the storm stalling pretty much due south of Tokyo, whereas other models are taking the storm off, accelerating up um, towards uh, the Aleutian Islands other models taking it to pull a u-turn and impacting uh, some of the japanese islands so it's all going to be happening right now and it will be a matter of miles about where the storm heads the further south it goes i'd imagine the, the higher the chance of the storm actually doubling back and doing the u-turn further north it goes the higher the chance of it being sucked up up towards the Aleutian Islands and Alaska, which is kind of the model support at this stage. So here's a look at the multi-model diagnostic comparison. You can see most models expecting strengthening to be rapid at times, up towards Category 2, maybe even a Category 3 peak if you're a follower of some of the smaller models. Deep layer windshield will be increasing from here on out, but due to the forward motion, it likely won't have an immediate effect on the storm until it gets to around 25 or 30 knots. Sea surface temperature is looking pretty good for the storm right now, 29 degrees Celsius, and mid-level humidity pretty poor at around 30 to 40 but that doesn't uh, really matter because that's just going to prevent banding features, I'd imagine, around this storm. It's certainly got some pretty good convection right now. Here's a look at the spaghetti models uh, from the GFS. The GFS has a consensus where the storm's sort of going to stall and dance around and weaken. However, some of the model tracks taken it to be quite an intense storm and accelerating up towards uh, the northeast and then beyond that, it looks like the majority of the model plots take the storm up towards the northeast beyond day 5 up towards day 10. So it'll be very interesting to see what actually happens here. Here's a look at the actual GFS model, what's most likely to happen uh, as per the GFS forecast. So you can see that stall before the storm uh, really weakens, turns extra tropical and then accelerates up towards the Aleutian Islands. Uh, doesn't really become something there. You can see just how big Kulup becomes uh, as it slams into the Aleutian Islands, probably with a pressure in the high 930s or low 940s. Alaska does not need this after the recent storm that they just had. One thing's for sure, a very powerful uh, extra tropical typhoon expected to move through that area after going a round of bomb cyclogenesis. This uh, looks to be a dual threat however for parts of the Aleutian Islands it looks like Kulap will do the main blow and it looks like this storm Roque will come through and just clean up the scraps. So here's a look at the IR satellite imagery and you can see that apparent eye right now um, yeah, surrounded by some pretty decent convection on the northern and the western side of the, of the storm. All it's got to do is wrap around it really looks like it's trying to do that right now and we could be seeing a pretty powerful typhoon out of this. I would not be ruling out a category 3 at any stage um, right now uh, from the system. We know just what the western Pacific can throw at us. I mean, look at what happened with Nauru. Uh, the update that I made on it, uh, calling for it to be impossible for it to get to Category 5 status. So what does it do? It becomes a Category 5 strength storm and an absolute misery to the Philippines. I really hope everyone in the Philippines is okay and not reeling too much from that devastating system. Here's a look at the visible satellite imagery. You can see as the sun sets over the storm, it's got a pretty good structure, that's for sure. Uh, a very photogenic storm, and if it was to wrap out an eye, this is certainly one for desktop screensavers, that's for sure. Um, it's a good sign that it's not going to be impacting any land beyond the Manami Daito Islands, which are so small you can't even see them on this map. But trust me, they are just outside of that western eye wall, which looks to be the most powerful winds there, approaching 40 knots right now. Here's a look at the water vapor satellite imagery with sea surface temperatures overlaid. You can see sea surface temperatures pretty good around 29 uh, degrees Celsius. They'll be dropping off to around 28, still very good for a rapidly intensifying storm. And little pockets of 29 ahead of the storm as well. Um, it's really only until it gets further north which will be a couple of days away uh, when the sea surface temperatures become really poor and terminal weakening will almost certainly kick in. 
That is the latest information that I have on Typhoon Roke. I, it's not really any threat to land at this stage. It's a good one to monitor if you're in Japan. It could have a pretty big impact on the weather, especially in the form of swells and rainfall patterns. So if you are in Japan, keep a close eye on this storm because it will have an impact on your local weather, but it's likely not going to impact you as a tropical storm. Even less likely, it's going to be impacting you as a typhoon. But I'm going to be very cautious in this video and not say anything as per intensity forecasts because it's the Western Pacific in peak season. What is it going to throw at us? We just really don't know. Again, with Typhoon Noru, we have no idea what was coming and look at what happened there. And I just really want to say uh, on a personal note, thank you so much for the incredible support uh, to my update on Typhoon Noru. It really did mean a lot and it's something that I'm incredibly proud of. But that's all from us on Typhoon Roke and we'll catch you on the next storm. Goodbye.